Eat my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Hello everybody out there. Uh, coming to you today to make another video. And um, like I said before, I like to re-research stuff. And um, uh, I have to give credit to uh, Passion for the Truth Ministries because um, I watched a couple of his videos. Uh, excuse me, and and he was talking about the color blue and how the color blue is God's favorite color. So I was kind of you know going through his teaching about that, and I um, noticed some things, and um, I, I put my own re research on it, you know, and what I kind of got from it from the spirit of of what what he taught, but also like more what what um, I kind of got from it. So I want to um, share that. So um, first, basically what it is, is blue is God's covenant covering color. That's what I call it, God's covenant covering color. It always has something to do with uh, covenant and God covering us um, in some way. All right. And, um, and a protection. It's like his covenant coloring protection of us. And so first, let's look at um, Genesis 9 with Noah and um, all that. And God said, This is the token of the covenant, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God... Okay, so you see there, what, what do we have there? We have an ark... Okay, we have a, a, a blue sky, um, and we have a, the rainbow, and we have a, a covenant that God made for, for protection, right? And um, we understand that the sky wasn't necessarily, I mean, I'm sure it was blue the whole time, but it looked different because there was like layers of water in the sky, you know, because that was part of the flood was the waters came up from the earth, but also they came down, you know, um, um, so... You know, the, the sky was a bit different in, in from Adam's time to Noah's time. So you have this blue sky now covering um, Noah and his family. And you have um, the, the covenant rainbow. And you have an ark. Okay. So that's one instance of it. Okay. Now we're going to look at um, Numbers 4, 1 through 7. Numbers chapter 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying... Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward even until fifty years old, all that enter into the host, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation, about the most holy things. And when the camp setteth forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil, and cover the ark of testimony with it. And shall put thereon the covering of badger's skins, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof. Okay, so what do we have there? We have a holy things. You know, and remember, Noah was righteous in his generations. So it's 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 uh, the the his people, God's people. You know, were were a holy thing to him. You know, and um, we have an ark of the testimony, ark of the covenant, and um, you have a blue 
covering of it. So they covered the ark whenever they would travel. Whenever they would move from place to place, they took it and they covered um, the ark and a couple of other things, but, but, but this blue thing is what mainly covered it. You see that? So it's a blue covering of it. And you've got the ark and you've, uh, okay, see that? Okay, so that's pretty interesting right there. Um, now let's look at uh, Revelations, um, Revelations 12, uh, 11 says, And they overcame him by the, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, um, and they um, love not their lives unto the death. Okay, so do you notice that? What else is blue that covers the sky, the blue sky, right? So it covers all of us now. It's there to, God could have made the sky any color. He could have made it purple. He could have made it, you know, green. He could have made it, you know, red he could have made it any color he wanted to but he chose to make it blue and if you read through the bible and if you watch um passion for the truth ministries he goes into it more deeply showing you all the things that are blue that that represent blue and how it you know relates but i just want to show um uh, these couple of things about the, the blue sky and the covering of it and um how it deals with the the ark okay and our testimonies the ark of the testimonies um and let's see. Um, so, blue. Uh, well, let me read, read this. Revelations eleven nineteen. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in His temple the ark of His testimony, and there were uh, lightnings, voices, thunderings, quake. And okay, what is this ark of His testimony? It's Jesus. This is speaking of Jesus. Okay, we're gonna look at that in a minute. Um, because I hope everybody knows that Jesus is our ark. You know, he is our ark. He got us, he, he brought us over, you know, through the, the, the flood and the destruction of our lives. He is, gives us victory in war, like the ark of the covenant, ark of the testimony did, you see. So, um, Jesus is, is our ark. Um, um, okay, so blue is God's royal color. Um... Uh, purple is man's royal color, okay? And we're going to look at this here in um, Mark. Mark 15. Caleb answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! Crucify! Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil have he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly. Willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple, and planted a crown of thorns, and put it about his head, and began to salute him. <laughs> Hail. King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Okay, so you see there they put a robe of purple on him and a crown of thorns, right? No, they put this this purple color on him symbolizing, you know, that he was a king, right? An earthly king of the Jews because that's what they're making fun of. They're like, ha, 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 you know, uh, he, he he's not ruling anything here for men, you know, and because they d didn't see it. But you see how they're putting that purple color on him. To symbolize a, a, an earthly ruling kingdom but he wasn't here to, to do that earthly ruling kingdom he was to do a, a bigger you know a blue roiling a roiling kingdom and, and victory you see um, so that, that I think that was very interesting that they would put that color on him you know um, and okay so um, okay so we we can see in just a second that Jesus, this is very interesting too, that Jesus was, um, had to be lifted up in between the earth and the blue sky, right? He was, he was hanging in between earth and the blue sky. 
and and to and his covering was was the blue of, of the sky and and everything and this is going to look very interesting too when when you think about these uh, passages that we're going to see when he's being crucified about what happens and what he says when this happens okay listen when the blue sky goes away listen what he says and they compel one simon a cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country the father of alexander and rufus to bear his cross and they bring him unto the place golgotha which is being interpreted the place of a skull and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh but he received it not and when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over, the King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, <laughs> He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of... Okay, so you see how it turned to darkness. And some of the other ones they talk about, uh, the other gospels talk about an earthquake and all that. You see, but the sky turns to darkness instead of the blue covenant covering over Christ. And that's when he automatically is like the um, God's, you know, covering over him. God's protection over him is gone at that instance. There's nothing but darkness. And, you know, and that's when it probably most likely this is the time when he is being, you know, um, all the sin is coming on to him, you know, and, and darkness and everything that, that that all the bad stuff that we do and Satan and everything else is coming on to him. And do you notice that, though, that the darkness, when it comes over him, the blue covering covenant is gone. So we take for granted every, Jesus knew it, but we take for granted every day that this covering that's over us that's protecting us. And this is just something that I'm throwing out there, too. This could be one of those main reasons why they're, um, they're, um, um, what's it called? Um, uh, just went blank. Where they're um, they're spraying the stuff out of the airplanes and all of that kind of stuff. That they're they're desensitizing us down physically, you know, through chemicals, chem chemtrails, like the chemtrails that they're spraying everywhere, right? They're they're dumbing us down um, physically and mentally, but maybe they're also trying to wage war on God to break us down spiritually in the sky. You see that? I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like another thing that I, I wrote down a long time ago that I was going to make a tittle of the day of, but I'll just talk about it now. Do you ever notice that there's less and less rainbows? I mean, when I was a kid, I would see rainbows all the time. You know, whether I was in Texas where I lived or Georgia or where, you know, we were traveling or something. I, if it rained, I would see rainbows. I don't hardly ever see rainbows anymore. Maybe that's what this has something to do with it, that they're waging war on God this way. And it's like it's it's breaking down the, the covenant and they're trying to break down the covenant. But I just wanted to, to point that out because, you know, that that to me is very interesting that um, when the darkness covered, the blue went away. And that's when he says, well, Father, why, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Okay, let's go on. And that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. 
and Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen, and took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in a sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. Okay, so he's there, and he's hanging between heaven, our heaven, the blue sky, but also, you know, even the second heaven and third heaven where God is. Um, but he's also in between the earth, okay? Now, it's interesting that here in um, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 47, it says, The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the, the Lord from heaven, okay? So you have though for those characteristics there. That's why he had to hang in between them. Right, because he was man and God. He was, he was, and we're gonna see First Corinthians fifteen forty eight through forty nine. Um, as is the earth, such are they also that are earth that are earthy. Um, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. He's both, so he had to hang in between there to to bring it all down. You know, to to crack the matrix, to to break us out of the cube, you know, to get us out of time. You know, he was outside of time, you know, because Jesus is God, so he's outside of time. He can move in and out. That's why, like, um, like in Exodus 34, 19, you know, um, those who come out of the matrix are mine, God says. Okay, so he that's how he gets us out of this, you know. And a lot of people were talking about that, you know, on the Internet now and on YouTube about, you know, Saturn and the cube and all that. Well, it's not really anything to worry about because the cross Jesus took can takes us out of it. You know, I mean, we, we are free from it already, even though we're still trapped in, the, in this dimension of time. We know eventually we're going to crack out of time. And that's part of our blessed hope. Okay, and then verse 49 says, And as we were um, bore the image of the earthly, we also uh, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, we're going to get out of the cube, out of the matrix, out of the power of Saturn, out of the power of Satan, out of the world, right? Because, like I said all the time, John 15, it says that the world loves his own. Okay, so we have to break out of, of the world, and that's what Jesus did for us. He made us heavenly as he is heavenly, and that's why Jesus um, had to hang in between heaven and earth. Okay, so that's my um, um, spin on it, I guess you could say, um, my take on the, um, the blue thing, because I mean, that's what came to me when I was listening to his teaching and everything, and I was like, man, um, it's interesting that Jesus, you know, was in between this covenant you know with his father abba father and, and us um okay well that's what i have for you today um wake and watch for yeshua and um, um listen to his teaching because it's really good i mean he goes into a lot of different things about how one of the things that was very interesting to me is i tell people all the time that we are like the um um we're this we are the like the new roman empire and one of the things and i showed all the care the different things that like they were obsessed with chariot racing a lot of people are obsessed with nascar they were obsessed with gladiator fights and stuff like that we're obsessed with like ufc and wrestling and things um they had a senate we have a senate um um all all those things he said one thing that all the um roman um patroller soldiers wore blue and all of our so-called police officers, you know, law enforcement, wear blue. 
And so I was like, man, that's kind of crazy that, you know, that all that's a comparison. But he also said it's because it's God's color and it's be, it's a servant color. It's a, it's it's to represent, you know, because um, God, Jesus is the ultimate, you know, servant for, for all of us, you know, and we are his servants. And, and that's kind of why. But um, why would they choose that color? Because they um, they weren't like followers of of God, you know, so it's pretty interesting. But, um, yeah, check check his videos out and. um we can watch for Yeshua. God is love, and I love God. Amen. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington, and then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Good day.